Boyle's Law, which was named after Robert Boyle, not to be confused with Susan Boyle. I dreamed a dream in time gone by. So, Boyle's Law says, for a fixed mass of gas at constant temperature, the volume of the gas is inversely proportional to the pressure. So this graph of Boyle's Law here shows a curve. Why is there this curve? Well, as the volume increases, the pressure then decreases. So it curves downward like that as volume increases. And then as the volume decreases, it curves upward because the pressure increases. Remember that if there is an inverse relationship, when one increases, the other decreases and vice versa. Here, this other graph is a graph of pressure versus one over volume. So if the graph of pressure is plotted against one over volume, you will get a straight line passing through the origin. Why is this so? Because although pressure is inversely proportional to volume, that then can be stated another way such that pressure is directly proportional to the inverse of volume. So the inverse of volume is one over V. Just like in basic mathematics, what is the reciprocal of five? The same as the multiplicative inverse of five would be one over five. So now we come to some examples. A tire with a volume of 11.41 liters reads 44 PSI, pounds per square inch, on the tire gauge. What is the new tire pressure if you compress the tire and its new volume is 10.6 liters? Write out Boyle's Law and substitute in what we know. This is one of those before and after situations, so we write P1V1 equals P2V2. 44 PSI times 11.41 liters equals P2 times 10.6 liters. Solve for P2. Divide both sides by 10.6 liters. 44 PSI times 11.41 liters divided by 10.6 liters equals P2. P2 equals 47.36 PSI. There are two significant figures in the measurement 44 PSI, so we round our answer to two sig figs. 47 PSI. Here's another example. A syringe has a volume of 10.0 cc's, or 10 cubic centimeters. The pressure is 1.0 atmospheres. If you plug the end so no gas can escape and push the plunger down, what must the final volume be to change the pressure to 3.5 atmospheres? P1 V1 equals P2 V2. 1.0 atmospheres times 10.0 centimeters cubed equals 3.5 atmospheres times V2. Solve for V2. Divide both sides by 3.5 atmospheres. 1.0 atmospheres times 10.0 centimeters cubed divided by 3.5 atmospheres equals V2. V2 equals 2.9 centimeters cubed, or 2.9 cc's. Boyle's Law relates pressure and volume. The pressure law is also known as the Gay-Lussac law because it's named after the French scientist Joseph Louis Gay-Lussac. And you might be expecting a joke, but I don't have any joke for that. So the pressure law says, for a fixed mass of gas at constant volume, the pressure of the gas is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. So our graphs of the pressure law will look similar to ones that we have seen before. This graph should remind you of the graph of Charles law. The pressure is directly proportional to the absolute temperature. And remember the absolute temperature means that it is measured in Kelvin. So since it is directly proportional to absolute temperature, then you have a straight line graph that passes through the origin. Meaning that if the absolute temperature is zero Kelvin, then the pressure would be zero. Pascals, atmospheres, whatever it is measured in. If the pressure is measured in Pascal's atmospheres or whatever, but the temperature is measured in degrees Celsius, then it looks like one we have seen before with Charles Law, where you have a straight line, but it does not pass through the origin because the coldest anything can get is minus 273 degrees Celsius in theory. So it would have an x-intercept down here at minus 273 degrees Celsius. It would not pass through the origin. 
So both graphs will be a straight line, but their difference is, just like with the Charles law, if it's absolute temperature in Kelvin, it passes through the origin. If it's degrees Celsius, it does not pass through the origin. It has an x-intercept of negative 273 degrees Celsius. Let's look at some examples now. A canister of nitrogen gas has a pressure of 2,000 psi, pounds per square inch, at 20 degrees Celsius. What will the pressure be if you increase the temperature to 25 degrees Celsius? Let's write down gay lussacs law, P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2, because we have a before and after. Remember to convert the temperatures to Kelvin. Kelvin equals degrees Celsius plus 273.15. So T1 equals 293.15 Kelvin, and T2 equals 298.15 Kelvin. Substitute in what we know. 2000 PSI over 293.15 Kelvin equals P2 over 298.15 Kelvin. Solve for P2. Multiply both sides by 298.15. P2 equals 2000 PSI times 298.15 Kelvin divided by 293.15 Kelvin. P2 equals 2,034 PSI. Here's another example. At 10 degrees Celsius, a gas exerts 0.95 atmospheres of pressure. At what temperature in Celsius will it exert a pressure of 0.75 atmospheres? P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. Remember, we have to convert temperatures to Kelvin. Kelvin equals degrees Celsius plus 273.15. So T1 equals 283.15 Kelvin. 0.95 atmospheres divided by 283.15 Kelvin equals 0.75 atmospheres divided by T2. Solve for T2. T2 equals 283.15 Kelvin times 0.75 atmospheres divided by 0.95 atmospheres equals 223.54 Kelvin. We're not done yet. Remember, we have to convert our temperature back to Celsius. 223.54 Kelvin minus 273.15 equals negative 49.6 degrees Celsius.